Hello everybody, welcome. Uh, there's been a lot of questions on the internet and especially on YouTube uh, about how to get that film look, that cinematic look to your videos. Um, I decided to put together a little tutorial. I hope this helps you um, get that look and so let's just jump right to it. All right, let's get started. So we have some random park visit clips here. Let's pick a couple of that uh, might be good candidates. Uh, maybe this bunch of flowers. Let's drop that into our timeline. Uh, let's see what else. This sign looks interesting. Let's drop that in there as well. We're going to keep this very simple and just very short to make it a little bit more um, speedy in terms of performance. So we got these two clips. Uh, first thing I want to do is get rid of the audio. Um, Obviously, we don't care about the audio for the purpose of this tutorial, so it would just be distracting. Let's get rid of it entirely. Uh, next item, I'm going to use Color Finale. Um, if you're not familiar with Color Finale, I highly recommend it if you're a Final Cut Pro user. It's a plugin that essentially allows you to do more in-depth color correction that's a lot more kind of professional in terms of its approach versus what Final Cut offers out of the box. Um, now, normally when you do color grading, you would first start by grading or uh, color correcting each of your individual clips. Now, given that these clips are very similar in, its, uh, in terms of their color, brightness, etc., cetera, uh, I'm going to apply a single grade across both of these. Now, the nice thing about Color Finale is that it comes, it comes with some additional tooling to help you do that in a uh, straightforward fashion, very similar to what Adobe Premiere Pro allows, which is essentially applying an adjustment layer across both clips. Um, the way that Color Finale does this is by using a title look grade. So essentially it makes it, essentially uses something that normally looks um, like a title, but it's not. Uh, it is something that you can drag across all, uh, it's, a, it's a layer essentially that you can drag across all of your clips in your timeline. Now, we're gonna start with a look grade and also a base grade. Now the base grade, uh, in terms of what these are, they're essentially the same exact thing. They're adjustment layers. But the way that we're going to use them is we're going to apply kind of our basic color correction first on the base grade and then do any of the kind of uh, stylistic um, corrections or uh, grading in the look grade. Okay, so let's get started with the base grade. First thing that we want to do is open up our um, effects and go to Color Finale. On the Color Finale, depending on whether you purchased Color Finale, the basic one or the Color, color Finale Pro, um, you'll have both. Uh, they're very similar, so this will apply to uh, using either one. But what you want to do is essentially drag drag it onto both your base grade as well as your look grade or individual clips if you're working on one of the clips directly. Um, when doing any kind of color correction or color grading in Final Cut, I highly recommend using uh, their color and effects workspace. The reason for this is it gives you uh, these nice scopes that you can look at instead of looking at your uh, clip library. Now, because I'm using a slightly smaller screen, I'm going to use a single uh, scope only. Now, by default, you get the RGB parade. You can switch this to other, um, other views as well, but we'll start with the RGB parade for what we want to do. Um, all right, so now that we got color finale applied, you want to open the controls, which will bring up a separate window that gives you these essentially these layers of color correction. Now you get color wheels, which are very common in professional color uh, correction software. You get curves, which if you've used Photoshop or uh, Premiere Pro, you're very familiar with already. You have a LUT utility that allows you to essentially apply a specific LUT to your footage. Um, this is especially useful when you're when you want a specific look, or maybe you want to um, use a LUT that's speci specific to a type of camera. And it's uh, especially if you're shooting in log um, 
format. And then the last layer here is the six vectors. This is actually very useful. It allows you to essentially take any of the six colors and manipulate them. Um, very useful when you want to get the skin tones just right. Okay, so let's just delete all of these because I was just bringing them up to demonstrate what they are. And we'll start with the LUT utility. Now, because I shot this footage on um, Panasonic's Cinelike D profile, there's a lot of LUTs already out there that essentially uh, add a little bit of contrast, do some default editing to your footage to make it a little bit less flat and, and bring it to kind of a normalized view. Now, obviously you can do this manually, but when you have a LUT that already does this, it's nice to apply the LUT and uh, go with it. So let's do that. The, the LUT that I like for Cine-D, like d profile is the Camara, I am probably pronouncing that wrong, uh, is the Camara Cine D LUT. Now you can see it didn't do anything too crazy to the footage, which I don't want to do. Uh, I don't want to do that through a, a LUT and just call it quits. Instead, I'll do that myself. Uh, but it did kind of bring the footage into uh, a more uh, a more saturated and contrasty look. Okay. All right. So we can take a look at both clips. And you can see they're both just a tad more contrasty. So let's get to actually adjusting this a little bit more. We'll start with the curves. All right. Now, what I like to always start with is adjusting the curve to bring back a little bit of the contrast, especially since I like to shoot in cine like D, which is very flat um, out of the box or out of the camera. Um, so I like to adjust even beyond what the LUT just did. I want to adjust even further to uh, give the footage a little bit more um, contrast and a little bit more of a, kind of wake it up a little bit more. So the way that you can do this is by first putting out a few points on your curve and you want to just bring down the shadows a tad and notice I'm doing very, very small adjustments. Um, you might want to just bring up the midtones a little bit and the highlights, you know, you, you usually don't want to overblow your highlights. So I like to just slightly bring them down to bring back uh, any of the details that might be uh, getting clipped. Um, despite the fact that obviously there's some obviously clipped details in the sky, but we don't care about those so much since they're just cool bokeh balls. Um, all right, so if we look at the footage, even, even when you make very slight adjustments to the curve, um, you'll see that there's gonna be a reaction on your footage, right? So you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to lose too much detail in your shadows by, by bringing them down too much, right? So this is probably around where I want it to be. And if I take this, if I disable this layer, you'll see it's a very small difference, but but it makes a, a, a significant um, uh, uh, difference overall. Now, the LUT utility, right? If I disable the LUT, all right, you can see, obviously, you, lost, you, you just lost all of that contrast that the LUT applied. So um, that's why I start kind of with that LUT and then build on top of it. But you don't have to. You can start by doing curves and then doing a more stylistic LUT uh, instead. All right. Now, uh, one of the things that you want to always do with your footage is you want to make sure that all of your red, green, and blue channels are somewhat normalized. You don't want to, want to be way off uh, in, in the wrong direction, um, which sometimes happens. In the case of this footage, it actually is pretty good. Uh, I don't see any of the channels you know, to be really off, um, but I'll demonstrate how you would do that anyway. So you can bring up the color wheels and within the color wheels, you have three wheels. <laughs> you have the lift, gamma, and gain. Lift corresponds to your shadows, gamma corresponds to your midtones, and gain corresponds to your highlights. And you can push e any of these towards a specific hue. So if I saw, for example, that let's say the blue was a little bit lower than the rest, I might, I might start by just slightly adding a little bit more blue in the shadows. Um, and it, as you can see, I did it a lot more and just to demonstrate how it, it affects the, um, the, 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 the view on your scope. 
right? So you kind of want to make sure that this is somewhat normalized. Um, now I think I pushed it slightly the wrong way. All right. That's about where I want them to be. Um, all right. And we'll close this out. So that's going to be our base grade. This is kind of what we're starting with. This is our footage normalized. So it's taking that Cine like D flat profile, making it a little bit more contrasty, a little bit pun more punchy with its colors. Now this is ready for more stylistic view or stylistic grade. So let's jump to our look grade. So again, we're going to open the controls for color finale. This time on with having the look grade highlighted because we're going to be doing our stylistic grading. Um, and here, again, you can take two approaches. You can use a lot to kind of give it some kind of a stylistic uh, view. Now, if you want that cinematic view, there's a bunch of really good LUTs out there that already have that stylistic kind of color coding um, in them. Um, I'll demonstrate one of them, which I really like, and I, I think a lot of people actually uh, tend to use this one for their footage. It's called Osiris, Osiris M31. Now there's two of them here. One is the Log and one is the Rec 709. Now, if your footage was recorded in a log format, obviously you, you can use the log um, uh, a lot, but if you didn't record in true log format, don't apply the, the log LUT because it will actually make your uh, footage too contrasty and, and really just with more uh, with lost shadows and blown out highlights. I could demonstrate that very quickly by applying it so you can see what will happen. See, it made the footage immediately very dark. Um, it's really not what I was going for. So if we do the Rec. 709 version, you'll see it will be a little bit more normalized um, and, and not uh, it didn't do anything crazy. Now, one of the nice things about Color Finale is it allows you um, to apply opacity on top of any of the layers that you apply. So if you have a LUT, like the O-Series, and you don't want the effect to be so strong as, oops, as we just saw in that footage, you can bring down the opacity to something a little bit more manageable. So let's say 50%. Um, now, one of the things that the O-Series LUT does and something that I wanted to kind of highlight that makes the cinematic footage kind of feel cinematic or look cinematic is it pushes, it separates the, the kind of warm colors from the cooler colors. And it does it by enhancing the greens and the blues and also enhancing some of the orange and, and reds. So it really separates your skin tones from their background. And that kind of gives your footage a more kind of lively feel. Obviously, in the clips I selected here, you can't really see that uh, effect as much because we don't actually have any skin tones here. But it, 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 you can see that enhancement and that separation. It really makes that sign, that red sign, kind of punch out, out of the picture. Um, you can see without the LUT, it's it's almost almost blends together, but the LUT kind of makes sep brings out that separation even more, which is great. So let's start with that, but with just fifty percent. Now on top of that, I might want to do some additional kind of color enhancement. I, maybe I want this footage to feel a little bit more greenish or or, or or bluish, just like most of the kind of cinematic films. So. You can start by adjusting the shadows and bringing them more into that kind of cool area, which is a little lower. Now, as you can see on the RGB parade, it's adjusting where the reds are, it's dropping the reds, which is fine because that's exactly what we want to do now. We're not trying to normalize the footage, we're actually trying to apply our stylistic uh, view to it. So this gives, it, uh, give, gives the footage a little bit more of a kind of a cool, um, almost mystical feel. But because of that LUT, you see the orange still pops out. We haven't lost those oranges in that sign. Okay, let's take a look at what the flowers look like. All right, the flowers also, you could see they have that, that, that reddish hue to them. We haven't lost that, which we don't want to lose because that separates them from the background and it really gives them that pop. Okay, all right. Aside from this, let's close this and 
What I like to do also is anytime that you add, you move the wheels towards, especially in the shadows, towards a specific color. Now let's actually just jump back into the controls again. Anytime that you bring this down into a specific color in the shadows, it gives the picture almost a slightly unnatural feel. So you also might want to apply that within your midtones and your highlights a little bit as well. Um, now you gotta be careful because you don't want to make your image just look blue or green. So maybe tuning it down, and this is where you kind of, it takes a little finessing. So what I actually want to do is in the midtones, I kind of want it to feel a little warmish. But then in the highlights and the um, and the shadows, I'm gonna make it feel cool, right? Again, this kind of gives it that more mystical feel. Now, because we enhance the shadows, one of the things that you always want to do is you want to make your shadows a little bit less saturated. So anytime that you move the color uh, wheels, you're also saturating your image in that specific spectrum. So if you saturate your shadows, obviously um, you're going to end up with a, um, a more kind of a, a, a unnatural looking image. So what I like to do on top of this is dropping a good old color correction um, from Final Cut and opening up the color board and going to saturation and then where you have the shadow, I like to drop it down a little bit, right? Just to kind of take out any of that unnatural feel. And you can see it makes a big difference in the image when you desaturate the shadows. It gives it a, a more kind of a natural feel. <laughs> So we'll do that. And the image, the footage you could see already is looking um, you know, fairly cinematic. Um, sorry about the frame rate here, but you can kind of see it has a, a kind of a filmic feel. Now, one of the things that really kind of give uh, footage a cinematic feel is those bars on, on top and bottom of, of the image, giving it that anamorphic, um, uh, uh, look and feel. Obviously, this is not a, a real anamorphic lens we saw, shot this with. We're not stretching footage that was compressed by an anamorphic lens. Instead, we're cheating and adding some bars on top and bottom. So there's many ways you can do this. Um, the probably simplest way is to just crop your um, footage from the top and the bottom, about 300 pixels from the top and 300 pixels from the bottom, will give you that kind of anamorphic feel. It's not the exact format of uh, what anamorphic lenses are, but you know, it gives it um, that similar look and feel to your footage. So let's take a look at what we've got here. All right, you can see right away the footage has, has that cinematic feel or mood. Um, it's got that kind of uh, slightly darkish taste. It makes you feel like there's a story behind it. So there you go. Now you know how to do it. So as you can see, it is very easy to get that cinematic look. Um, give it a try and let me know what you think. If you have any other ideas or pointers, feel free to comment down below. If you uh, like the video, if this helped you in any way, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'll have more of these kinds of tutorials in the future. Thank you and see ya.